O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Picked the longest hymn in the hymnal this morning for our sermon hymn, so hopefully you, you got warmed up there, because now it's time for some review, review from last week, and well, Lord knows I always need review, because after the 8 o'clock service last week, and a lot of you were here, I wasn't sure I knew what the sermon was about, so here's the review, hopefully it stuck for you, or this is what I meant to say if I didn't. God's word is what makes you and me different. It's what sets us apart. It's what cleanses our hearts. So God's word is what makes you and me different. It's what sets us apart, and it's what cleanses and gives us new hearts. As opposed to, you remember what the, the, main, the main thing that Jesus was talking with the Pharisees about last week was? They, they thought there was something that they had that set them apart. Remember what they were doing? Washing their hands. Okay, one person was here. Thank you, Bruce. You saved me there. So there was this question last week, the first part of Mark, Mark 7, 1 to 13. Some scribes and Pharisees come up from Jerusalem. They see Jesus and his disciples, and they say, Jesus, why do some of your disciples not wash their hands before they eat? They're eating with hands that are filthy. They're eating with hands that are defiled. They said, why don't they follow the tradition, the way that has been handed down by the elders, because this is what sets us apart. The Pharisees believe their tradition set them apart. Now, I don't think they got there originally. Originally, they probably said, yes, it's God's word that sets us apart, that makes us holy, that gives us and cleans, cleanses our heart. But suddenly, tradition had become the thing, and they built that tradition one rule, one law at a time. The Pharisees ended up with 613 laws built around God's Ten Commandments, His Word. They built a wall all the way around it to protect, and they built themselves inside of that wall. And then Jesus had these words from Isaiah chapter 29 when He says, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, and then He dropped it on them, hypocrites, for these people honors me with their lips, but their, remember what it was, it was far, far from him? Hearts are far from me. So if you didn't, hopefully you've picked that up, there's a theme of heart. The theme is about the heart this week. Their hearts are far from me. See, the Pharisees, spiritual people, love God and said we need to make a wall around God's word so we don't even come close to it. But unfortunately, that wall, 613 rules or laws high, was something that walled them off from the world around them, that walled them off even, I think, from God himself. And there was a separation between the things on the outside, on the outside of them, and the things on the inside, their heart. So Jesus then, he lets them have it, and then we're going to pick up the rest of the conversation today, starting in verse 14. And it says, Jesus called the people there around him. It's no longer just the scribes and the Pharisees. It's everybody who is there listening. And he says, hear me, all of you, and understand. It's going to give a little lesson here. There is nothing outside of a person that by going into him, can defile him, can make him common, can make him unholy. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. It's pretty basic, right? I mean, he says, the Pharisees are concerned about outward stuff, about whether people are eating with clean hands or not, saying, if your hands aren't clean, you will be defiled. If something breaches the external wall, that's what will make you filthy with sin will make you unacceptable to God. And Jesus says, no, no, no. It's not about anything getting through the wall on the outside. He says, actually, the sin, the filth, the defilement comes from the heart, which belches out, which spews forth the sin, the defilement. Well, the disciples then are saying, so Jesus, 
Is this one of those parables you were telling before? Because we're not sure we understand that. And, and when they're with Jesus later, and then verse 18, Jesus, slightly exasperated, says, then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from the outside cannot defile him? Since it enters not into his heart, but into his stomach, and then is expelled, sent into the sewer, the latrine. So Jesus gives this anatomy lesson here. You know, when you eat, it goes into your mouth, down the esophagus, through the stomach, or into the stomach, through the intestines, large and small, and then out into the sewer. Not what makes you dirty. And he says, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. And here he's not talking about, and I just changed the diaper this morning, he's not talking about the poopy. I don't know another word. Defi de uh, uh, anyway, he's not talking about that. He's talking about what comes out of the heart, not about the digestive system. So the Pharisees have built this wall, walled themselves off and said, as long as we don't let something from the outside get to us, we are clean. The religion, the, the, the sacred people that God had made the Jews to be because of his word, we heard that in Deuteronomy 4, where they said God's word sets us apart, makes us special. And then Deuteronomy 6, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then it said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. See, God's word comes from the outside, makes them special or separate. But suddenly these walls, these 613 commands, they say, well, this can keep us safe. It's no longer about God and what he has done, but about what we're doing. Well, man-made religion, this is exactly what man-made religion always does, says as long as we keep ourselves safe, as long as we do what we can do, we'll stay clean. And Jesus breaks that paradigm just to pieces. He says, if you think there is a wall that keeps you safe from sin, all you're going to do is basically poison yourself because your heart will spew forth all this sin and toxicity and it's going to be stuck inside your wall there. You'll die. In 21, Jesus says, For from within the heart, or from, from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. He's got half of the commandments there. He says, these are the things that come out of the heart. You can't wall yourself off from what comes from within. Breaks the paradigm. And those words come to us this morning. People that have already come into God's house, and, and last week we talked about this, not wanting to be hypocrites, taking off our mask in confession, saying, God, forgive us for all of our sins. We come in here not as people who have been successfully able to keep sin from getting to us, but people who are filthy with sin because our hearts belch it out. Cleanse us, God. Give us a new heart because it's your word that makes us different, that sets us apart, that cleanses our hearts. King David talks like this in the Psalms. Psalm 51, verse 10. We read it this morning, but we sing it every week in our liturgy. We'll sing it here in a minute. This is the, the cry to God for us peoples whose hearts belch sin out. Remember what we sing in, in just a minute when I'll have you stand up for the offertory? Remember how it starts? Create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Because from within, out of the heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, 
coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness? Is your wall high enough to protect you from all that? Do any of those hit you? I know they hit me. More than one or even two. So we say, God, we know our hearts are filthy with sin, but you, and you alone, can give us a new heart, can cleanse us, can take that toxicity of sin away and make us people whose hearts beat for you new, clean energy. In Galatians chapter 5, St. Paul after listing some very similar things to what Jesus says about evil thoughts, sexual immorality, murder and theft, all that stuff, coveting. St. Paul then says, after God gives us a new heart, God sets us apart because of Jesus. He says, our hearts will beat for him, and then the fruit of the Spirit will come forth. You know these? Love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. You see, when God gives us a new heart in Jesus, this is what comes out. But not before. And not because of any walls that we could erect because of tradition, but because of Jesus and Him alone. So God comes in His Word, His Word that breaks down, that crushes the walls that would separate us from Him, the old Adam and the old Eve, and He says, you're mine. And then we use this strong language as Lutherans that say that He drowns the sinful nature, that that heart stops, that heart that spews forth sin, and then He says, a new heart is given to you. A heart tied to Jesus, to his death, and his resurrection. From that heart comes love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self control. The beautiful thing is that a clean heart, because of Jesus, comes out clean energy. So we pray, God, on our hearts, imprint your image. An image of the cross. An image of an open tomb. Not an image of a wall. Not an image of something that would protect us from the world outside, but that protects us from ourselves. And then God says, I have set you apart and made you holy because of Jesus We can't set ourselves apart. We have no chance. But because of Jesus, He gives us new hearts. Hearts for Him. So we pray that we will love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might, and that our hearts might be after His because of Jesus, His Son. Amen.